TLO, what's pop? We are on kickkick.com. We are live. By the time you see this, we probably won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, right above me. If we go live and you happen to miss it, highlights will be on this channel right here above us, or above me. Uh, don't forget, we do got merch, got mine on, you get me. We also post a Patreon five days a week, Monday through Friday, no Saturday, no Sunday. Uh, the, this is everything that's on there, you know what I'm saying? You could pause it or you could just go, you know, down to this description of this video. Click that thing that say link tree. And this, along with everything else, will pop up that I just mentioned, man. You can check it out yourself, man. Con by my church is the craziest title. Um, I'm not going to pretend like this does not happen or it's not a phenomenon that's happening and and they don't be scamming, they, they, you know what I'm saying? Uh, now, I do want to mention, you know, this is not all churches. And that is the devil. That man is doing the devil's work. A sheep in, in a, a wool and sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing or whatever. Just want to mention that, man. We might say a prayer. Shoot. It's on BBC, huh? Tonight on Panorama, oh. we investigate the church facing allegations of fraud. I feel like heartbroken because I'm thinking this is supposed to be like a family and like most importantly, it's like God's people. And its leader, a charismatic pastor. God is going to help you, is going to change your life forever. I need you we reveal the church's appetite for cash. A basic person in the month should give a thousand pounds. I think that's normal. I think it's no big deal. It's not even that deep. You walk into a room, you see... Normal. I think it's no big deal. It's not even that deep. A thousand? When this come out? A th okay, 10%. You know what I'm saying? Cool. But you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you, what is, th the thousand ain't, t some people, I I just discovered that a whole household in the UK could uh, be making 2,500. You wanted a thousand? This is you. You didn't say God. You said you. You walk into a room. I'm bothered already. 14 to 15 people with bags of money. And hear from young worshippers who say the church has left them thousands of pounds in debt. I feel anger because not only are they doing it to more people, they're doing it to the most vulnerable people. As the truth emerges about a church that's recruiting vulnerable teenagers, we ask who's protecting those who've been duped. I strongly believe that because it's black kids, it's almost seen as that's, that's, you, that's you lot's problem. I really hope this this documentary doesn't come across as this, the church, because the name is crazy in itself. Like it should be conned by my pastor or something. Like, like, like this is not the church makes it sound like it's all churches across the world. It do say my church, but. Really. This is. You know how it go though, man. Money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil, but money is the root of all evil. Like this guy, right? Black nation, a church like no other. The vibe, like they're just really like soulful and it's just like a lot of music, a lot of dancing, singing. So yeah, it was pretty cool. The clothes people are wearing is very fancy, it's, um, it's trendy, it's designer, so I'm thinking, wow, okay, <laughs> if church is like this, then sign me up. Sound like you was in there for the wrong reasons. Though. Spring uh, I know that ain't the pastor car. This is its leader, Pastor Toby Adeboyega, on his way to a church service in London. He was filmed last year for a BBC Three documentary series. Oh, he wigging! He got a Lambo, 
not a hurricane, not an Evo. This a <laughs> this a SV or S or whatever, whatever. It's then he got the AP on. Like I'm not pocket watching, but this is a show for pocket watching, ain't it? He always emphasizes that he came to the UK with nothing, and he worked as a kitchen porter, and he was extremely generous with his giving. And from there, he's built up to become what he is now, which is this image of wealth and extreme luxury. He preaches a form of prosperity gospel, a belief that God rewards the faithful with material wealth. Pastor Toby would always preach about being financially motivated, being healthy and wealthy in Christ. He claims the church, which started around eight years ago, turns violent gang members away from crime. It's caught the attention of the media. Over 55% of the people in the church were ex-gang members, drug dealers. We had over 1,000 people, young men, came forward to renounce that life. How would you define this back? We may be ahead of our time, but it's I don't want to say it, but a lot of scammers in Chicago are from Africa. That's not everybody, but a lot, a lot of them. Revolutionary is doing church in a completely different way. No, I feel like if money is the topic, I don't want to be involved, man. If if, if money is the topic of discussion or money is the main reason for anybody's for anybody to do anything, it's like I'm not, I'm good. Because that ain't me, man. I didn't start doing YouTube for money. I didn't start doing none of nothing for money. I, I do this because I enjoy it. A lot of my videos is, 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 is you know what I'm saying, copywritten. I don't get paid for a lot of stuff. So don't come at me with that. So, like, this, 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 like, the only thing you should be doing for money is working a, a job or pursuing your dreams as an entrepreneur or anything like worshippers are from gangs he said he was washing drug money that's the many join because the church promises to help them succeed financially, i can see that though even setting them up in business it's easy to see why spac nation is so attractive for young people but on social media serious concerns have been surfacing because if you look at the back the the, the business side of of a church, only your own church. It's a non for profit. You get paid from the government. And yes, like they, the, the 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 church itself does collect from the congregation to keep like like to make upgrades or or do st certain things with for the church and to help. The, yes, yes, maybe to help the pastor out a, li a little. But this guy got a Lamborghini, all type of like what's going on? I mean. Salute if this congregation is knowingly doing that, but it about it by the yeah, nah, he had to be washing some type of money up. He had to be about the church's fundraising activities, no way. prompted by this Instagram post, which went viral. But I want to know why a church that's supposed to be helping young people is encouraging young people to go and open business accounts or businesses they don't have so that they can share the money. I went to meet the man asking questions about the church. Vic Santoro is an ex-offender himself. Now he's a musician and actor. Vic told me his 20-year-old brother joined SPAC Nation earlier this year. As a budding football coach, his pastor offered him a tempting proposition. My mom called me. Yeah. I was like, your brother started up a business. Really? And she was really excited about it. And like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of him. He told me, no, no, these people in the church approached me and said, X, Y, Z, they can help me start a coaching thing. The pastor registered a company in Vic's brother's name and opened a business account for him with HSBC. When I was asking about the application process, he said, no, I never filled an application. I just gave them my deals and they did it. So I'm straight away, I'm just thinking, that's not a church's responsibility to be doing that. The business account had an overdraft facility. How much was that? Two two thousand pound overdraft. Was. Two thousand pounds. Yeah. What happens to that money? So they basically take him to the bank. He withdraws fourteen hundred pounds. Give it to them because it was they said it was part of consultation fee slash helping him set this business up. But there was no business and no money in the account. 
In the end, Vic's brother was left £2,000. Wow, straight scamming. Straight, I'm talking straight Snapchat scam. Yo. One's in debt to the bank. Yeah. Why do you think he fell for this? You know, there's an element of him not re doing you know, research or be diligent enough. However, you know, in ethnic minority communities, a lot of families, like God, like faith in general, is it's like a beacon of hope for most families. He, in his head, there's no reason why they would be trying to trick him into anything, right. or trying to do, you know, anything that can get him in potential trouble. So he would obviously take their word for it. Why would you use God's name to, to trick me? It's an evil, evil being, man. Those of you called to make money is a call. But that's how demons come, right? That's how demons could get you, right? They take the form of something that you that 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 you're comfortable with. And they, you know what I'm saying? Don't give up on it. Don't let the world teach you false humility. Yeah, the guy. Right? Back Nation encourages worshippers to donate money to the church. It says the more they give, the more wealth and success they get back. They call it sowing seed. Fear nothing. Toby Adiboyega even suggests It sounds like he just twisting the Bible. How much seed members should donate every month. A basic person in the month should give a thousand pounds. I think that's normal. I think it's no big deal. It's not even that deep. Panorama has now spoken to many young people who say they felt under intense pressure to give. I know people personally that have given a thousand pounds a week. You don't ever question how you get the money, you just get the money and give. We never like openly admitted to each other about the struggles that we had in terms of giving. Like all we knew is that there was a vision that Pastor Toby has set for each member to also like up, have in their minds and in their hearts about the church and then we were all supposed to like, just contribute regardless. When you are the biggest giver, it's noted like you will be endorsed, you will be called on stage, you will be shown love, and you'll be treated differently. If God has been good to you, hallelujah! The man everyone wants to please, Toby Adiboyega. He's a charming guy and very intelligent with his wordplays and with the way he preaches through that psychological mind play. You want to do what Pastor Toby asks you to do, and in Spark Nation, you don't ever disobey your leaders. The church says it has five community units in London. They're run by Toby Adiboyega's most senior pastors. Called the generals, they lead his recruitment and fundraising. The generals are the people that are very close to Pastor Toby, the people that you bow down to and say, hello, sir, hello, ma. Um, so, the first in line would be Pastor Sam. Well, it's not about the politicians, it's about the system. Samuel Okokia, or Pastor Sam as he's known, has a conviction. Now, now, now we're not going to sit here and act like this is not structured like a real church. It is structured like a real church. It's structured how our church is supposed to be with pastor and everybody under him. But at the same time, they're, they're, I can see it already. Man's is suggesting how much somebody should give. That's not how it works. You don't suggest, you, you give what you can. You don't take a suggestion and then feel bad when you can't reach it and then f bleed yourself dry giving, no, 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 no. That's not what, that's not, that's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> ...for attempted robbery. He credits Toby Adeboyega with turning his life around. So Credit God. Not him. This is irritating. A Kokia uses social media to spread the word about the fundraising targets of his leader, PT. And you know what's crazy? Some of the followers or some of the bishops or some of the people in the church that are that are employed or work with him together probably don't even know what's going on. Probably some of them do, probably some of them don't. Three days ago, God began to remind me about the testimony of PT regarding giving. And he began to show me that it is not too small for individuals to give 1K a week. Akokia runs what Spat Nation calls a trap house. Trap stands for take risks and prosper. The church says it encourages pastors. Bro, what? <laughs> Bro, that's a scam term. But they just kind of flipped it. 
There's no reward without risk. They're like you got like they, they that's what a lot of scammers be saying to you. Scared money don't make no money. That's literally what I do. To open their homes to members with housing problems. But for some, it was the start of a journey into debt as the church began to look for new ways to get money. I was already quite detached from my family, um, even going through, I guess, my depression and mental health battles. So I was living by myself at the time. Nino works in advertising. He says it wasn't long before Akokia asked him for money, telling him it was to fund more trap houses for single mums. He said quite bluntly, oh, I just need 20,000 pounds from you. If you don't want to give me 20,000 pounds out of your own pocket, we can set up a, a loan scheme for you of £20,000. Nino says Akokia told him the £20,000 loan would buy him a stake in a property investment company. When Nino said he'd need to see proof of any shareholding, Akokia got angry. He said, well, Smart man. are you saying that you don't trust a man of God? Um, and at that point, I became very uncomfortable because... I trust God, I don't trust the man. <laughs> I had believed in this man. I had believed in, you know, the, the preaching that he gives, um, you know, the words. Nino refused to take out a loan. Akokia told us he's never approached a church member for a £20,000 investment. Lovis this is, this is 19 is, and is being treated. I'm literally, this is scamming 101. This is, remember when scamming was big, like a like few years ago? These were the same tactics. Like, this is the same. Wait, when would this come out? This specific one was uploaded three years ago, but I'm pretty sure this was out like five, six years ago. Maybe three, maybe four. But, if like, the these are the same taxes that, that, that this is. Like, I'm from Chicago, and I currently live in Florida. Like, these are the tactics. This is it. <laughs> cancer when she moved into a Kokia's trap house last February. In trap houses, you don't have your freedom. Scamming God's people is crazy. Spat Nation is in front of you 24-7, in your ears 24-7, so you don't know anything else. What you're seeing is PT's vision. That's what he wants you to see. In March, she discovered that a four-year loan with the company Amigo had been taken out in her name. She confronted another senior pastor. Without her knowledge? I basically asked, um, what's happening? Why do I have a loan in my name? And they basically said the loan was for the greater good and they were going to use the money to buy a bigger trap house. Who's got to pay the loan back? People. And I was thinking, okay, that's all well and good, but why did I not know about it? Lovitz doesn't know how it happened, but we think we do. She'd previously given her personal and banking details to a recruitment agency when she applied for a job. We now know the agency was run by Akokia. Oh man, they're How much deep. What are we talking? Okay, so the loan was actually a loan of five thousand pounds, and with repayment, it will go up to ten thousand pounds. Fifty percent interest. Ten thousand pounds. Yes. The loan may have been in Lovis's name. Wait, is that a hundred percent interest? We've seen evidence the money was transferred to ER Management Group Limited, a company run by Akokia's brother, Emmanuel, another pastor in the church. We don't know what happened to the money next. I felt angry at Gee, the setup is so crazy. I was really angry. When I went to uh, confront them, they said it was going to get paid. I didn't need to do anything, so I was reassured because I didn't spend a dime of that loan. Lovis says she was told the Amigo debt would be cleared using funds from a business account, but wasn't told that she'd end up being responsible for that too, leaving her in even more debt. I've got quite a few documents, actually. One document reveals that in February, a company had been set up yeah. in her name. It had been registered as a company? Yeah, so uh, Lovers Relations Limited is the company they registered for me. So basically, you have a company that you, you know nothing of. You don't even know what the company is based on. And I mean, these are official documents. This is real. Yes. 
That company was used to open a business account with HSBC. It had a £3,000 overdraft facility. Just over £2,000 was paid to a company owned by another member of SPAC Nation. The company Yo, man, that's, this is sad. So they open up businesses and in, 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 in congregation people's names. They open business. So with a business, like just like here, with an LLC, you can open a business account. These business accounts have high overdraft coverage. So if I overdraft by 1500 or 2000 it's covered. I'm allowed to overdraft that high. So they set up a payment arrangement. And they automatically withdraw that amount from the bank account on set date. And then the overdraft fee protection covers it. And now they're in debt. That's that's wild. And they're doing this all in the in the in the in, in the in the in the um disguise of it's for G O D. This is why people be so worried. You know what I'm saying? This is why people be so scared. This is terrible. That has now been dissolved. Six hundred pounds was taken out in cash. Lovis says she knew nothing about any of it. She's Ow. been left with more than fifteen thousand pounds of debt. And did you confront Pastor Sam? I spoke to him, um, asking him if he was actually uh, going to pay for the loans and actually going to do something. And most of the times he would say to me, yes, we're going to sort it out. However, there's a lot of people that uh, are basically in the same situation, so we need to be patient. And I just felt like he was constantly lying to me. What has happened here is Lovis has given her identity information, uh, probably under false premises. That information has been abused in the sense it's been used without her permission to obtain loans. So what, are they still free? They can't be free. Um, she's then been lied to, uh, had f false representations given to her about what the loan was for. All of that is dishonesty, all of that is fraud. Akokia says he's personally unaware of any incidents where an individual's details were stolen and used to take out a loan or a business bank account. He says the safety of individuals in his home is a priority. This is another of Toby Adeboyega's generals. Her name is Maria Mola. She has a string of fraud convictions, yet still ran a trap house for young women. Look at their charges. This is this is crazy charges. He just recruiting. I said to my girls this morning, I don't know what you think is happening in this house. I tell you what to do with your finances. I tell you where you're going. It's not like you have an option. If you have an option as you're leaving the house. Yes, sir. As you're leaving the house, drop your key in the letter box. I need an order. A house of order is a house that will prosper. We've seen. You know what I'm saying they're disguising what they're doing in the in the in the, in the word of the Bible because that is in the Bible. That's tough. That's tough. One of her WhatsApp messages in which she suggests Toby Adiboyega knows about the use of loans. The message starts "Good evening, leaders," and goes on to say, "PT not against loans." We've also seen a WhatsApp leaders chat from inside the church in which Toby Adeboyega himself says, you guys have been good in raising loans. The church told us that loans do not fund the church. However, loans may be used to fund businesses and endeavors. Sema, a 24 year old teaching assistant says he was persuaded by a pastor to take out a £2,000 loan. The peer pressure is real and the, and the pressure from the so-called leaders, those who are above you, is yeah, it's definitely intense. Sema says he was told... Hey, these dudes, they're grooming a whole church. The money was for a business investment and it would all be paid back. It wasn't. He left the church in December last year, but that wasn't the end of it. Pastors still had his bank details. Closed the bank account. A month later, he received a letter from Amigo 
confirming he'd been accepted for a £5,000 loan. Well, straight away, the day after, like, I saw that. That's when, obviously, I contacted um, Amigo Loans. I was, I was furious. I was, like, I was legit furious. The money had already been paid out to a guarantor yeah. named on the bogus application. Amigo began a fraud investigation. So here I have um, the letter like, that's been written to my address from Amigo Loans, basically telling me of the outcome of the internal investigation. And, and what did they say in the letter? They I had know, I already know what it said. Acknowledged that it was not me, that somebody has actually been impersonating me and pretended to be... Because it wasn't you. Because it wasn't it? me in the first place. And I saw them proof as well it wasn't me. Amigo concluded Semmer had been the victim of fraud and wrote off his £5,000 debt. Oh, OK. He had a lucky escape yeah, and blamed SPAC Nation. No cap, that's real lucky, because most banks, they go, like, well, you can figure it out. Mm. I haven't shared my details with anyone outside of my family uh, for years, and l l it was only spec who I shared it with. How's that left you feeling? It made me feel confused, like upset, um, and violated to find out that somebody wants to go a step further and go behind my back and impersonate me. I'm really shocked to hear this, this type of activity because you've got people in trust who are effectively financially grooming young people, they've been completely manipulated for the worth they've got, which isn't very much financially, but it's their credit rating. And they're being groomed for gaining funds for someone else's purpose. And it's, it's wrong at every level. Very much so. Like many churches, SPAC Nation is registered as a charity. Now for Until profit. recently, Toby Adiboyega lived in this rented £2.6 million house in Croydon. Here he is at one of the church's regular meetings. Let's just go for it. <laughs> the deep report, the total funds raised year to date, 53k. Yes. Toby Adiboyega and members of the church are totting up how much they've raised in the first five months of 2018. Across all the Connect family, the total that has been managed to be raised since from January to May is 216,000. This total this year, including crossover, is 761,440. More than three quarters of a million pounds. But that's not enough for Toby Adiboyega. But I tell you, June ending, we've got to reach a million. The church told us there is an expenditure for the year that it needs to meet in order to keep doing the work it does in the community. As a charity, SPAC Nation files accounts with the Charity Commission. They show that by the end of 2018, its annual fundraising had increased sevenfold from £164,000 in 2016 to nearly 1.2 million pounds. And they outside hopping, hopping in Bentley Continent, Bentley GTs. Curtis was a member of SPAC Nation for four years. He joined in 2015 and became part of Toby Adiboyega's inner circle. When you're there, you really don't question it. You don't, you don't see the flaws in him. And if you do see the flaws, you're made to ignore it because of the word that he delivers. Curtis left at the beginning of this year. He'd seen the pressure on young worshippers to give and had become disillusioned with the church. How much money is passing hands from young people to Pastor Toby? It can vary. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's some sums that he'll ridicule to make you feel like, yeah, you're small, you can't really help me. I ain't even gonna lie to you, bro's going to hell. Bro's going to hell. And it's going to be a fiery one. <laughs> no, this, this. Like, if you've come to him with like 2K, 3K, he'll ridicule you. Curtis says he witnessed large sums of cash being handed over by pastors at monthly meetings. To so set the scene for me, what, what's it look like? You walk into a room, you see 14 to 15 people with bags of money, and they're just some cash machines running. <laughs> it's just... This is literally, he ran a, he ran a, a trap house. 
trap house. This is a trap house. This is a criminal organization. Very similar to, to El Chapo and them. But instead of cocaine, it was promises of wealth and, and disguised but with with the negative use of God's name, like like in God's name. He did this all in God's name. Yeah, there's a... So, so what happens with the money? Where does it go? From there, I, I don't know exactly where it goes. What do you mean? They go in the overseas accounts, you know what I'm saying? They go in the accounts that can't be accounted for. But it goes. <laughs> Somebody in the comments said he was washing uh, dirty money too, which is, it makes sense. Bro pulled up in the Lamborghini S, SV, whatever it was. Quickly. Fundraising targets were rising. What amount does this work need monthly? And I put it that we need one million pound monthly. One million. It just went crazy. Everyone is running around. Why is it so crazy? because everyone wanted to hit the target and you already know what the people go through to try and hit the target. So if you really think they're gonna come up with one million pounds, it makes no sense. The church told us it would be unreasonable and far from practical to meet the million pounds a month target from young people. It says it has a large number of professional and business people in its congregation who are its primary and most generous donors. According to the church's latest charity account, just under £59,000 funded five full-time staff. But the accounts don't explain how the lavish lifestyle of Toby Adiboyega is being paid for. They must be getting their income from other means. Now, unless they can explain what those other means, um, we're left having to draw an inference that they're gaining the money from other sources which may not be legitimate. Toby Adiboyega ignored Panorama's request for an interview, but SPAC Nation told us he takes no salary from the church, but does receive gifts and support from business friends and family. Although he occupies a house, it's not for his personal use, but for... It should, it should be in the description of the stream. Church use. Or right there. Gracie was 21 when she joined SPAC in 2017. She says she was duped into taking part in another fundraising scam, this time involving benefit fraud. Gracie had lost her job and could no longer afford to give. She says her pastor, Ebo Duggan, had an idea. I told him I wasn't working, so we were talking about seed. And obviously he was like to me, oh, Gracie, like you haven't been sewing and stuff like that and I was like yeah but you know like I haven't been working he's like yeah like you're not working you should get universal credit to obviously support you and obviously you can give seed I'm just like oh yeah I never really thought about that makes sense Ebo Duggan said he'd take care of the online form all she had to do was go to the job center and show her ID she then received instructions via whatsapp messages someone else in the congregation now has messaged me he said oh Gracie, when you're going to your universal credit appointment, um, send me the code. So I'm just like, uh, like, what code? And she was like, oh, when you get there, you will know. They're going to give you this code. Take a picture of it and send it to me. We've seen the messages in Gracie's online application. She handed over the code as instructed. Within 10 minutes of leaving the job centre, details had been changed. She now had two children, making her eligible for a large advance payment. Yeah, then obviously my meeting was done. Next thing I know, there's like money in my account. The Department for Work and Pensions paid her £1,200 the same day. The two people who'd been messaging Gracie while she was in the job centre then told her to hand over most of the money to them. I gave £550 to the guy, then I sent £350 to the, to the girl, and then I kept the rest. Even sometimes when we know things are wrong, in that moment, I'm just thinking, oh, OK, like, Obviously, my father figure would not let something like bad, like he wouldn't tell me to do something bad, basically. So. Gracie's since been investigated by the DWP. She's been fined £600 in order to repay the 1200 All in your name. I can't afford it, obviously, but I'm doing like the best I can. Obviously, I'm just paying it bit by bit. 
my parents obviously they're not like rich or anything but they've obviously said like listen you've made a mistake we're gonna help you out and um sorry <laughs> oh, you're right, right, sorry can i just take a minute i feel like heartbroken because i'm thinking this is supposed to be like a family and like most importantly it's like god's people and obviously this is not how god's people are supposed to behave this is not god's people I already said it earlier, and it's not God's people. They're scammers using God as the cover. The church says it's investigating and will give Gracie's pastor, Ebo Duggan, the opportunity of first response. It says Duggan, who's one of SPAC Nation's trustees, handed in his resignation to the board two weeks ago. SPAC Nation denies that either the church or Toby Adiboyega are financially exploiting young people. It says it has a robust complaints procedure and a well-run disciplinary system. It can't be responsible for what its hundreds of members do, some of whom are ex-offenders. The church has big... You know, he knows how to protect himself. He's blanketing himself. But everybody else, everything, nothing's in his name, probably. Ambitions. Yeah, I heard it. Stuff was in his brother's name, stuff was in this person's name, stuff was in that person's name. Nothing in his, though. It says it has 2,000 young members and is expanding into universities outside London. Sir, are uh, hostels and uni accommodation be targeted 110% everywhere there is young people? In October this year, Toby Adiboyega attended Boris Johnson's speech at the Tory party conference. The Spark Nation has this vision of being a mega church. Um, and I think that has always been the end goal and to affiliate themselves with powerful people in the world. And I can't deny that they're successfully doing that at the moment. Former worshippers say their greatest concern now is for those who are still with the church. I feel betrayed and I feel like I feel anger because not only are they doing it to more people, they're doing it to the most vulnerable people. There are people who I believe are there and that it's I... It's crazy because your trust in God is built off faith, you know what I'm saying? So that, that, just with that alone, like, you got to move with faith, you move with faith, give me this in faith, give me that in faith, you got to have faith, you got to have faith. I'm pretty sure that's how they was put, wrapping it up, you know what I'm saying? Give blindly and it'll be returned to you. Give blindly, like oh my god, it's low key a perfect scam, but like it's it's so morally wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 it's, it's, it's and you know me, I grew up in the church, and this is bothering me. It's bothering me to my soul, man. It's tough. Genuinely there for Christ and for their journey with God, um, but I can't stress that. There is more bad than good. SPAC has to be shut down. Toby, he has to be held accountable for everything that has gone on. Certain leaders, they shouldn't be around youth. They shouldn't be around anywhere where people are vulnerable. The Charity Commission says it's launched a statutory inquiry into SPAC Nation and ordered it to bank its money. The Metropolitan Police says it's reviewing allegations of possible fraud and other offences. It will then decide whether to investigate further. In places where the church is most active, there's concern the authorities are taking too long to act. I strongly believe that, you know, it's because it's, it's black kids. And because it's black kids, it's almost seen as that's, that's, you, that's you lot's problem. The sad thing is a lot of these young people, they are looking for something better. That is why they went to Spark Nation. Young worshippers like Lovis trusted the church to help them. Instead, they've been left burdened with huge debt. It will take them years to pay off. Mm. Just be careful out there, man. Period. You, we, we know right from wrong, good from bad. If something inside of you is telling you that this ain't it, then move around from it. Simple. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.